This is Code.org, and let's talk about a binary search. Binary search is foundational to computer science, and I'm really excited that they're having us go through this. So I'm going to reset, run, all this does, get a ticket, and well, it uh, it produces a random number for us, right? Boom, boom, or a pseudo-random number. And what it wants us to do is kind of analyze how that's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of these numbers, 9, 32, and... I'll place one here. Let me do this again. 127. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch, but you get the point, and I'm just going to kind of drag them out as I go. Okay, and now I have my numbers in order. Now, what if we wanted to find a particular number? What if the winning number was 932, and I flipped all of these over and we had to search for it? Well, honestly, I might start with the one closest to me, and we'll pretend like I'm standing here. Okay, it's not 82. And I'd have to go through all of these numbers before finding the actual winning number. What if it was random? I mix all these up, I throw them up in the air. How many would I have to go through? Well, it depends, right? Maybe it's one. Maybe the first one I pick up happens to be this. Maybe it's four. Maybe it's all of them again. It's really going to depend on the randomness of that event alone. But having them in sorted order matters, and being able to process data quickly matters. Let me show you what I mean. So in their example here, instances, you have three numbers input, and there's three steps. Six inputs, six steps. This is how many times or how many numbers you have, and how many steps it will take in the worst case scenario to find a number. For instance, if your lucky number's 50, Worst case scenario, it will be that many steps. Use the ticket generator to generate seven tickets. Write down the numbers. Got it. Organize the sticky notes in numeric order. Got it. Copy one of the numbers onto a separate sticky note. This is the number you are searching for. All right. Challenge. Create an algorithm if a given number is in a list of sorted numbers. So what they really wanted us to do is see if we could figure out how to find this number more rapidly. Now, if you were in my classroom in person, I would split you into, a, you would have a partner. I would always pick your favorite person because I'm kind. And what I would do is I would give each of you three numbers ordered and you would have to decide by picking up a one, what number to guess next. And you would notice pretty rapidly, say, for instance, you're the partner and you pick your largest number first, because again, you know they're in order, and it's 315, and you know that hitting that magic number is 338. Well, I'm not going to then choose any of these numbers, because I know, me and my partner know, it can't be these two, because I already saw my largest number. So now I'm eliminating options, and I'm eliminating time wasting for the computer. And this is essentially what a binary search is. We can eliminate chunks of uh, search results. We can ignore them to improve efficiency, to look for stuff faster. Now, I brought up this quick visual from uh, Wikimedia Commons, and it's really good at showing what I'm saying here. Let's say we have numbers 1 through 15, okay? And our lucky number, sure, is 8. Okay, well, in that case, if I just grab that middle number right away, I got it. But let's say... We don't know what the lucky number is going to be. The computer is not sure. And the order isn't exact. So maybe it's uh, not 1 to 15. Maybe it's 1 to 100. And there's 15 numbers in between. So what it can do, though, is the computer will look at the center number. And it says, OK, right now my lucky number will be 15. OK, is, 15, is 8 greater than or less than 15? 8 is less than. Well, it knows the number next to 8 is greater than 8. So all of this, it's gone. It forgets about it. It doesn't worry about it anymore. It heads this way. Except it doesn't go to the number next to 8. It cuts it in half again. So it says, okay, 8 to the max. Well, the max is 15. So 8 to 15 is 7. 7 divided by 2, it decides to go up 4, right? Because it would be uh, 3 and a half. So it goes up 4 and says 12. And says, okay, is 12 15? Nope. Is 12 less than 15? Yep. And so now it cuts off all those numbers between 8 and 12 because it knows it can't be these, be these, and never needs to look at them. And suddenly, okay, now let's go. Now I have 12 to 15. Well, what's in between 12 and 15? It could even pick 13 or 14. It picks 14 because it has these two nodes. 
Is 14 greater than or less than 15? It is less than, and finally we have it. So this is the worst case scenario, right? How many steps can you go down? One, two, three, four numbers it has to look at. But still, only four numbers compared to maybe having to look at every number, right? Before I said maybe we'd have to look at all of them. Now the computer at most would have to look at four to find the correct number. And that's how a binary search is going to function. It's going to allow the computer to process data more rapidly, as long as they're in an order, by splitting things in half. So if they're in sorted order, it cuts them in half and keeps going. Google would use methods like this when searching through data. Alphabetizing things on a computer would be uh, very similar because it says, OK, it's not less than this. The number representing a capital A is greater. And it looks the other way. It slices data and then moves on. So it doesn't have to look through every tiny detail, uh, which is critical for performance of computers and machines in general. Binary search, yes greater than, equal to, less than, and then it moves on from there. Now this is going to show you the speed of performance. So look, worst case scenario, you have 100 items, it takes 100 steps. Worst case scenario here, okay, if we were to calculate this out, well look, 15 items, 4 steps like we just did. 7 items, worst case scenario, 3 steps. So no longer would we ever have to go through all of that data as long as it is sorted. And this is, you'll see a lot in computer science, this is called a linear search, meaning you have to just go down the line. It's a linear search. You are just going to go through, plot through each number. And if the number is 0 to 15 and your number is 15, you have to look at all of them. Whereas a binary search eliminates that possibility. Let's take a peek at the questions for this. Okay, what is the third step using binary search to look for the number 32 in this list? What I want to point out is what is the third step? You want to start by cutting the data in half. So if we were to count these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So hopefully I didn't miss one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's 15. Okay, so if it's 15, perfect. That's one cut. That's the center number. And again, binary search keeps going by cutting data in half. So now we have 6 over here and 6 over here. Well, 6 divided by 2 is... Uh, we have 7. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 if I round up. And this is what we just saw. Same here, because I'm not sure which way. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But seven numbers, because 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 7 divided by 2. So 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. Watcha. Right? And then you would divide it again. So what would be the next? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so with that in mind, if it's using a binary search to look for the number 32, what is the third step that it's going to process? So I can tell you right away, this is definitely the first step. And then it has to either throw out this chunk of data or this chunk of data. And let's say it does throw out, I don't know, because the number is negative 17. Oh, that number's not even on here, huh? But say it's negative 17, then it would throw out this chunk. And it's going to look over here and it will say 4. Is 4 greater than or less than? Oh, it's still greater than. So it would throw out this chunk if the number is negative 17. Obviously, this wouldn't work. It would fail to find it because it's not on this list. So keep that in mind. And let's take a look at this last one. Which of the following is true of two algorithms designed to solve the same problem? Oh, so keep in mind the performances, like on something like this, how it can change. So hopefully this one stands out for you right away, but you really want to keep in mind how different methods of going through data can impact certain aspects of computer performance. All right, good luck with those. I love binary search. Onward.